Welcome to the Neuropathy Support Group and Podcast. I'm Chris, and I'm so glad you tuned in. It's my hope with this podcast to help all of us gather information that might help those that need support dealing with this debilitating issue. Hello, and welcome to this podcast. Before we get started, let's get the formalities out of the way with the medical and privacy disclaimer. I am not a doctor or medical professional. The information on this podcast is from personal experiences and is meant for group support. Additionally, the information discussed is not meant to diagnose, treat, or cure any underlying conditions associated with neuropathy. All names here within are private and will not be shared with any outside sources. Please consult your health care provider before making any health decisions. If you have medical concerns or an immediate emergency, please contact your doctor or dial 911. So I hope everyone had a great weekend. I'm still in a lot of pain with my knee. I'm still waiting to have the surgeon call me. And it just seems like everyone's dropping the ball on me. But I'm going to strive through it all and keep producing these podcast episodes for you. Today's episode is going to be on four great exercises for people managing diabetes-related neuropathy. While exercise can't reverse neuropathy, it's still important to be physically active when managing diabetes. So it says to follow these tips when breaking a sweat. You know that exercise is vital to leading a healthy life with diabetes. To help boost your cardiovascular health, reduce body fat levels, and better manage blood sugar. But if you're managing neuropathy or nerve damage, which a report published in January 2017 in the journal Diabetes Care estimates half of the people with type 2 diabetes are, is it even safe to break a sweat? The short answer is yes. You just have to take certain precautions when doing so. So we're going to go over some things that you, you know, most likely already know. So it's kind of a repeat of some of my other podcasts. But what is neuropathy and what causes it when you have diabetes? First, know that neuropathy is nerve damage to cells that it can occur anywhere in the body. Through the condition often exhibits in feet and hands. In people with diabetes, High blood uh, sugar levels are persistent with hyperglycemia, which can cause neuropathy, not to mention a slew of other potential diabetic, diabetes complications. Meanwhile, in those people with poor circulation, a common side effect of diabetes, which is a lack of blood flow and oxygen to hard to reach nerves, can cause further damage and cell breakdown or cell death. So what are some of the common symptoms of neuropathy? The results of this damage includes everything from chronic pain to impaired digestive system, urinary tract, and cardiovascular function. But the most common signs of neuropathy include pain, tingling, and numbness in the extremities. When such symptoms set in, The idea of exercising can become a bit scary. After all, sense of touch is your body's built-in protective system. So if that protective system isn't running at top speed and your hands and feet are tingling or even numb, how safe is your workout? So you really need to watch that and make sure you you don't hurt yourself more than what you're already hurting. So, before you break a sweat, determine whether you need neuropathy treatment. If you feel tingling, numbness, loss of sensation, or pain from common clothing like socks or even bed sheets, that, that's your cue to stop what you're doing and potentially seek treatment for neuropathy. If you find from checking your feet daily that you have a blister or an ulcer, be sure to notify your physician to help prevent infections. Loss of sensation in the foot or ankle can significantly increase the risk of getting infections in those areas from routine cuts or abrasions. Meanwhile, 
if you're standing on the gym floor performing squats, it's the nerves in your feet that help you gauge your body's positioning and maintain balance. Both are vital to performing your workout safely and effectively. Here's the next subject. Why you still need to exercise if you have diabetes related neuropathy. Despite all the excuses you may come up with, the skip to skip the gym when you have neuropathy, you have even more reasons to make an exercise a priority if you're managing this complication. That's because exercise is actually good for neuropathy. One of the best ways to prevent progression of diabetic neuropathy is to stay active. For instance, in one study published in September of 2012 in the Journal of Diabetes and its Complications, all it took was 10 weeks of exercise to significantly reduce pain and symptoms in men and women with diabetes-related neuropathy. In that time frame, the patients, or I'm sorry, the participants' nerve health and function also improved. But that's not exactly surprising when you consider what researchers already know about the benefits of exercise for diabetes. Physical activity is a great way to keep your blood sugar levels in check, improve insulin sensitivity, and reduce inflammation. So here we go with the the best workouts for people with diabetes who are managing neuropathy. First, we start out with the low impact cardiovascular exercise. Cardio's ability to improve vascular health in people with type 2, type 2 diabetes is well established. In a study published in January 2017 in the International Journal of Neuroscience suggests that aerobic exercise may also improve blood vessel health in those dealing with diabetes-related neuropathy. Aerobic exercise can also help reduce blood sugar and cholesterol levels, according to the American Diabetes Association, which helps to further improve blood flow to your hands and feet and improve nerve health. To, bo to boost your blood flow while preventing cuts, scrapes, and blisters, skip pounding the pavement in favor or gentler low impact activities such as swimming and cycling if you aren't the most balanced on a bike stick with an indoor one whatever workout you choose try to perform at least 30 minutes of air of aerobic exercise five times per week and that's a recommendation from the ada so next is going to be strength training seated your muscle, insulin, and vascular health are tightly linked, and muscle acting as a sort of sugar-burning furnace that just so happens to help your blood vessels pump blood to and from your heart. While weight-bearing exercises that keep, your, keep you on your feet are great for helping you get the most out of your every rep, if you're not so steady on your feet, Working out with the barbell across your back is probably not a great idea, but don't worry. It's impressive how many effective strength exercises you can perform from the seated position. Check out your gym's seated leg strengtheners, including the legs extension, hamstring curl, and glute kickback machines. Meanwhile, you can perform a vast array of upper body exercises from bicep curls to shoulder presses while seated on a bench. The ADA recommends performing strength exercises at least two twice a week in addition to your cardio workouts. So let's talk about balance and stability work. By, dam by damaging nerve function and sensation to your feet, diabetes-related neuropathy greatly increase your risk of falls. According to the review published in the, uh, December 2014 in the International Journal of Nursing Sciences, it notes that one previous study of an older adult, those with diabetes-related neuropathy were 23 times more likely to suffer a fall compared with those without. That's where balance and stability work comes in. 
training your muscles and the neurons in charge of them to properly fire and work together. The most important muscles for keeping you upright are found in your feet, legs, and core. Try to integrate some sort of balance and stability work into every workout. Perform one-legged exercises, holding onto the wall or a sturdy object for balance. Practice walking from heel to toe in a straight line. And complete core exercises, including planks, dead bugs, bird dogs, and cable shop chops, he says. So here's the next topic, mind-body exercise. Yoga, Tai Chi, and active meditation exercises may really be what your nervous system needs. After all, studies have repeatedly shown that yoga is beneficial in the management of various neurological disorders, diabetes-related neuropathy included, according to a review published in October 2012 in the Journal Annu Annuals of Indian Academy of Neurology. Researchers note that yoga is beneficial in reducing stress levels, blood pressure, and inflammation, all of which can affect the progression of diabetes-related neuropathy. And although yoga might feel less intense compared to uh, cycling or strength training, it still gets your heart pumping and can build muscle. Performing your mind-body method of choice in ways your needs and augments your other workouts. For instance, you could consider a gentle flow yoga class as a way to recover after a more intense strength or cardio workout. Meanwhile, more advanced yoga classes can function as a great cardio and strength workout in one. So a couple of other things before we close up here. I found another website uh, they talk about stretching increases flexibility. Take a couple minutes a day to stretch your arms, neck, legs, and feet. It doesn't have to be long or rigorous. You can move your neck side to side and up and down or move your legs in a bicycle motion while sitting or lying down. Make it your personal goal to try at least one of these activities. Moment of any kind, movement of any kind is better than none. Remember, your body needs to heal, and when you stay active, blood continues to circulate, and healing begins. Take some inspiration from the tortoise and the hare. It's not how fast you go, but the determination to stay the course that you will reach the finish line. That's pretty good. I like that. One thing I'm going to really enjoy is I have a swimming pool now, so I'll be able to do some, um, you know, re resistance uh, training inside the pool itself so I'm really going to enjoy that I'm hoping that that will do some give me some relaxation at least give me less pain so I don't know I'll have to try some of these out I'm not sure you know if any of you have already some of these um, ideas that they give us to maybe help with the nerve pain but I'm going to give it a try and like I said I'll give it a try more um, probably after my knee stops hurting and I talk to a surgeon. And then this summer when I uh, start swimming around in the pool. Again, I want to thank you all for being part of this podcast. I hope you guys have a great week and weekend coming up. And I will talk to you next Monday. As we come to a close, it's my hope this podcast and other sources such as product reviews that I have discussed today can better our lives and give us some relief dealing with neuropathy. This episode plus others are posted every Monday on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, iTunes, Spotify, and Stitcher. And finally, whatever life throws at you, even if it hurts you, just be strong and fight through it. Remember, strong walls shake, but never collapse. Talk to you next Monday.